Hi, welcome. We're glad that you're back to see part two of this webinar where I'm discussing with Simona Herb some of the best practices for getting started doing couple therapy. And we're specifically talking about um, doing that in Romania, but it applies in other countries as well. It's not too different. Little, little caveats because um, we're speaking directly, specifically to what happens in Romania. So welcome, uh, Simona. So very glad to have you back with me. Hi, I'm glad that I'm back too. <laughs> I'm excited to tell other new tips for the therapist in Romania. Yes, we've uh, both been practicing couple therapy and I guess we maybe should introduce ourselves. Although I, most people who would be watching will know who we are, but just in case, I guess. I'm Dr. Rebecca Jorgensen, and I'm a certified emotionally focused therapy trainer and supervisor, as well as a therapist. And I have been doing couple therapy for, I don't know, 12 years. I've been a therapist for over 20 years, and I came across emotionally focused therapy in about 19... 98 perhaps, but I didn't attend my first externship. I read the book, heard from John Gottman about Sue Johnson, started to read the book, tried to practice the cycle. And then I went to my first externship with Sue Johnson and realized that what I was doing in therapy wasn't at all emotionally focused therapy. It was like a behavioral or cognitive approach to couple therapy, trying my kind of my best out of book learning to just do it. So I got very excited. That was in three, I think, to maybe 2004 and got very excited about emotionally focused therapy. And I was the only person in my, the part of the country that I was living in, in the whole state of um, Idaho that had been, had been to a externship with Sue Johnson. And I left thinking, I have got to help other therapists find this model. And it's made a huge difference in my work as a, as the therapist, and also just in my life, knowing the model and being able to help spread it. So Simona, why don't you introduce yourself, yourself as well? Yes. Hi, I'm Simona Herb. I'm a therapist. I'm a systemic therapist it, since 2009 and uh, in 2010 practicing systemic therapy I got to know about another approach which was called EFT and I thought oops it's so nice it's interesting I guess this is it and in 2010 I had the occasion to actually participate to externship with Sue Johnson and then I knew it for sure that this is it what I want to practice because this can bring uh, to the people even individual but especially to the couples they can bring the real treatment I mean the real thing and since then I uh, did the core skills and um, I started my dream to bring EFT for a lot of other therapists here in Romania. So we had here in Romania externship and core skills one and soon in March we'll have core skills two and we hope to start a new group in externship in June to the end of June and so Actually, what we want to try is to infect is case this is published the EFT virus all Romania. That's Actually, right. it makes such a difference in couples and families. We want to keep spreading it. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, to help more and more couples to to be how actually they want to be, not just we want us uh, we don't want them to be but they want to be but i guess until eft we really didn't have all the tools yeah that's right as therapists of course we are called to or you know excited about or moved to be in this profession because we want to help others and 
And if we're a couple therapists, it's because we want to help others in their relationships, which most psychotherapy really has to do about relational issues. And so being able to go right in and help the most kind of important relationship of an adult, which is their partner, you know, their marriage partner, their life partner. That's uh, really exciting for a therapist, a couple ther therapists to have a model that makes such a difference in the life of the couple. So we're very excited about it and glad that you would uh, be joining Simona and I as we were having this little bit of a discussion. So Simona, um, one of the things we've talked about kind of sharing with folks is questions that have come up really um, to you and some to me from other therapists in Romania about starting sessions, kind of how to get started. We talked in part one about moving, getting the invitation out to the individual to bring their partner or to the therapist to invite the partner in. And maybe we can pick up from there a little bit. What we didn't talk about in relation to that is how to um, start a couple or be become known as a couple therapist so that couples actually start calling you. And I think you've seen that transition in your own practice. So maybe we can talk about that for a minute. Yes, as we talked a bit in the part one as well, when you believe in yourself that individual approach is enough, then I guess you don't call so many couples. You don't advertise yourself, especially as a couple therapist. You are just a systemic therapist, meaning you can see individual couples and families. Uh, but as well, I guess you don't call them, you know, like energy or somehow, because you believe it's possible to help them as they think it's better but once i understood and it's in me that i can help them much better as couples uh, than just individuals i started to advertise myself like this i'm like i anywhere i put articles about attachment about couples about relationship about that long life happy relationship are possible so actually to guide the people that this can find if they come to me as a therapist i mean this can find special or different from other therapists and of course that i do eft this approach that is really really unique and different and I advertise what success rate it has EFT, as we know. Uh, and this is again different, makes people hoping, but as well makes them trying, you know, it's like, wow, so such a big success, let's try it. Yeah. So I advertise myself because I believe more in myself as a couple therapist and that I can help them more when they are together than when they are separate. So, and in the process of moving into being a couple therapist, to let that be known, right? So that though you do get those calls that you're in a, that you're a couple expert, if you've taken the externship and are moving into additional training for that, to really know how to help couples, because we, as we know, the externship isn't quite enough to have this process down it takes it's a very simple um, format but people are quite complex and it's it's kind of tricky to learn it takes some practice to learn so we want to have some couples because we can help them if we have the attachment frame and as we get better and better we can help them more but putting that out is really an important part and if you want to call a couple couples you know invite some couples to come in for free or low pay while you're getting that little bit of confidence and then to to put that out like you said in a variety of places on your website um, on your business card if you're speaking anywhere introduce yourself as 
you know, a cup, you could even say I'm a couple and individual therapist, or I'm a couple and systemic therapist. You can put, you could start to emphasize couple there so that people start to hear that. Oh, there's such a thing as couple therapy. It was uh, a couple years ago or a year and a half ago. I think the first time when I was in Romania and at the lodge where we were staying, the uh, reception desk, the person at the reception desk asked something about what was I doing in Romania? And I said, oh, I'm a couple therapist. And he looked at me like, couple therapist? Um, yeah, I said, um, marriage, marriage couple, marriage couple therapist. You know, I work with couples who are having difficulties in their relationships. He went, oh, hmm. Like he had never actually, of course it was in English, you know, but he'd never heard the term or kind of the concept. So it's really important to kind of get that out there. And I guess you come across that as well, Simona with people not very familiar with the idea of there being a couple expertise. Yes, I mean, uh, first of all, that we are not so accustomed with couple therapies, but as well that I didn't advertise myself. You know, systemic therapies can mean anything or you know you say just couple and family systemic therapist but since i'm advertising myself as couple therapist couple relationship expert i can enhance your relationship people are more trustful to come to me for this not just for therapy any therapy general therapy but couple therapy yeah that's really really important too have that start to put that out there, play around with it, put it out there, help people know that it's available and that it's available from you. So that's a really important thing. So now we've got the couple there. We, the individuals brought their partner or we um, have um, been contacted by a couple. We've let some someone know somehow that we or have a couple openings for couple there for couples to come. Maybe we know an organization or something who could tell us of a couple couples or pass on to them if we're offering something for free. And we have the couple in the room. So now we have a couple of things that we want to do um, that would be kind of standard to do in individual therapy, but that we want to emphasize as continue uh, continued important thing to do in couple therapy. And those have to do with how do we begin those assessment, assessment forms, confidentiality, and then in emotionally focused therapy, one of the, our best practices. So those are kind of, you know, standard or best practices to, um, and also required in some places, you know, like when I teach in the United States, we're actually required that people sign confident sign um, consents for treatment so we've got the consent for treatment and then a best practice in emotionally focused therapy is to videotape our sessions so we can review them we can learn from them we can get supervision even if we're not sharing it for supervision that we can review it so there's kind of these forms um, and how do we approach that what kind of forms do we use what what to do when we get the couple in the office. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about what your setup is like, and I can also talk about what my setup is like. Yeah, so I, uh, when they come, um, I tell them a bit about what is EFT approach. And then for me, it's important this confidentiality contract not just because it's i mean it's standard but we can use it or not it's not just a demand from from the couple but actually i know that it brings security in the room when they know that if i tape them if i record them this will be between us and maybe a supervisor that's it so um this I do, this confidentiality contract. 
and uh, then I just make the first session. In the end of the first session, I tell them that I will send them some questionnaire to fill in, which they will bring me so much more information and we will not waste time from our sessions when they come and we can do really work um, for getting this information that they could offer me by filling in these questionnaires. I don't give them before coming to the, to the real session, let's say at least the first, because I need to have an alliance, the joining. I don't want to scare them with I don't know how many questioners or two that they believe that it's too hard, it's something too complicated. Once I have the alliance, actually they are very okay with filling in so and so many questioners. And as well, they understand the use of them that we don't use from their time and their money um, too much time to ask questions which maybe they are not relevant, but just filling in the questions, I know that this is a not relevant area. I don't go there. I go where it's relevant. Okay, so that um, that initial assessment that you do in person, you're doing um, the couple assessment with them both there through an interview uh, process. And then at the end of that process, as you reschedule for the next session, you through that process, you decide what additional assessment instruments, what additional assessment do I need? What instruments can I give them that would be helpful um, for them and for me? I think for me, a lot of times I'm having people do assessment questionnaires more to, I mean, I, I can use and want some of the information, but for me, it's not as much about the information as helping them also know what kinds of things are important to pay attention to, because the kinds of questions that you're asking make oh, kind of open them up to think about those areas, which is great if you've met with them once, then you can kind of really streamline their focus by the kinds of a question, kinds of assessments that you give them to do. So I really like that approach that you're um, doing there with your couples, Simona, um, and that's a really nice thing to do. So you can give those assessments at the beginning. You can give them after the first session. You can kind of find your what works for you in your situation in relation to those additional questionnaires. But as far as the confidentiality agreement, um, I guess there's two things. One is the consent for treatment, your contract with the couple about being treated and in couple therapy. And one of the things that I've done with my consent for treatment or that contract to work is I have put in the contract that I work from the model, from the emotionally focused therapy model. And I give just a little brief summary of it that it's a three stage, nine step, three stage process. And we'll work first to understand and de-escalate the difficulty between them and then to rebuild trust and closeness in the second stage. So don't give a lot of detail, but this is the enough that they can look up about it if they want to. Do you do this in your consent? Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I add that okay. into my consent a little bit about me and the way that I work. And so I introduce emotionally focused therapy in that initial contract or consent form. Yeah. And um, then sometimes they have more questions about that and sometimes they don't, they're just happy, you know, like that to, to have the treatment and many couples don't really, aren't concerned about the modality itself. But I do that, um, because sometimes I have clients who really do want to know, who have looked up um, emotionally focused therapy or want to look it up. And th the other reason I like to do that is because uh, I do want consent for working in the way that we work because emotionally focused therapy works different. We are 
process oriented. And so we're not only experiential, but we're also emotionally focused. And I kind of want them to be aware of that. And I also use it a little bit later in the treatment. I may say something like, hey, we're almost done with stage two, or we're about halfway through or just completing step four of this nine step process. I do it as kind of a way to encourage them to stay engaged in the therapy as we go along. So I really like to lay that foundation early that this is the modality that I'm working from. It kind of keeps me accountable too, to not just go drifting into problem solving with them or you know, chatting about the, the argument they had with their neighbor or something, or, you know, really helps me kind of keep that focus on the couple work. Um, let's see. So one other thing then is that's the contract or the consent to work. And then the other thing was the confidentiality agreement. And that really comes into play when you start videotaping. And it, it of course, I, Actually, let me hold that. Let me say that differently. Um, the confidentiality is important. It's typically part of the consent for treatment that what you're learning about them is confidential and you know can only be released under certain circumstances. And that will go according to your region or country codes around that or your professional codes around um, that confidentiality, but it's very, very secure building for the couples to know that you have professional standards that you abide by and to lay that out a little bit. Confidentiality is a big one. And then we have the release of information, which releases us from holding those certain bits of information confidential. So the client's have signed confidentiality agreement, and then they release us from bits of that, like when we videotape, that we're videoing and we're going to use that for consultation. So, so that they're very involved in this process of knowing what their rights are and how we're protecting them. And that, um, so yes, I, they have this confidential, this information is confidential, and then they release us to get supervision, to video, uh, to, do, you know, to do those additional things that will help us in their case. And so there's a special form for that vi video consent or it's a, a bit of a release to be videotaped because we're, they're releasing a bit of their confidentiality to that, but under really specific circumstances, like the video release that I use um, lets them indicate whether they are releasing for my use only, you know, that I'm doing this video just for me, whether I'm doing it for me and um, my consultant or a group perhaps that I'm involved in. And then, of course, since I also train therapists, there's additional release to share the video for training and consultation purposes. And I even have a release that gives me a commercial right where they give up all of their um, confidentiality agreement so that, that some videos can be used for training and education and they um, release all of their rights to confidentiality in that. So you can do that a little bit or a lot, you know, those releases but it's, it's a really good comfort to the couple that you're safeguarding their confidentiality by keeping these professional standards. What kind of, um, and I think we've sent, shared a, a video release recently, Simona, and do you want to talk about your consent for treatment? That initial confidentiality agreement? Yes, I have a standard contract, I guess, um... We, we all can find it uh, on the Romanian Association of Psychologists. Um, and I use this standard contract where it's with the, their rights and their obligation and my rights and my obligations and where it's written how much is the session, when they pay it, which are my... Um, my obligation towards them and 
there I put a, a line, I added up a line, which is about taping them. And these tapes uh, will never appear in another way but for the supervision. So like this, I handled. I mean, I don't have two separate things. I have the standard contract from the association, which is on the their website, so anybody can have it. Where I, I mean, and uh, any lawyer can tell you that there you can add up whatever you want. What do you think yes. it's better? I didn't want to be too much. Yeah. I mean, to with too many lines to to think that anything it's not okay like, there. Not like buying but, a house or something, right? It's a simple kind of simple one or two page, one page in the back kind of a form that they can go through in a kind of a simple sort of a way that really lays out those rights and responsibilities. I also do include my video consent, my video release con consent to release and to tape. Um, on my standard consent for treatment, like you're describing. I do that as well. Yeah, so I just added up this line with the session will be videotaped. Anyway, I can put this as well on the group. And so this the session will be videotaped and the, uh, the um, uh what i have the videos will not be released anywhere but for my use and my supervision with trainers from usa so they read this and i never had one case that they would say no until now for this yeah so they sign it and i made it i make it clear from the beginning that's so, isn't that so exciting to know and relieving really that couples are happy. They're not making a complaint. They're happy to agree, happy to agree to the taping. It's standard practice. Um, it's For me too, it's just standard practice. It's part of my regular consent for treatment that I'm going to be videotaping because I I want to videotape all, all my sessions. As I want to be able to review them. And it's kind of a rare circumstance that I wouldn't. I just have my camera there set up ready to go and it's standard practice that i'm videoing and couples by and large uh it would be an, an unusual circumstance that i wouldn't be videotaping or have the ability to the consent to videotape so you found that very that part very easy as well yes that's right i mean it was all i guess more the fear than the reality yeah, this yeah part. Is, lots of times it's just that we're afraid to tape or see our tape or approach them. You know, it's it's kind of vulnerable to do something new like that, especially when we're learning uh, at the same time. So uh, it's great to know that in reality, it's not kind of the block isn't the couple, right? It's just kind of risking to do that. So now you talked about some forms that you use, that you kind of determined to use at the end of the first session to send them home to complete some more assessment for the next time that they come back. What kinds, what forms are you using? What assessments are you using? Uh, so I don't use all the time exactly the same, um, the same questionnaire so, so because use all of these all the time but these would be kind of a selection of questionnaires that you may decide to use based on what the couple's presenting with exactly i mean depending on what they present in the first session i can believe or i have some questions or i have some doubts or ideas about any of the areas that i would like to know more um so i give these uh, questionnaires that i think it would be right but of course for eft um uh, the questionnaire about the connectivity so the a a re e r e uh, questionnaire i all the time use it this is no doubt i mean it's not uh, so yeah this is a much the basic the how are they doing with their attachment 
their accessibility, yes. responsiveness, and engagement with each, and with, with each other. That's standard. You use that with all couples. Me too. Yes, this I uh, and the um, dyadic adjustment scale. Mm -hmm. I use it. And then if I have um, ideas about if one of the partners is depressed or I can give a questionnaire for depression, but this depends very much. But the st I mean, the, the thing that I always use is the dyadic adjustment scale and uh, the attachment. Yes. Um, questionnaire and uh, the um, attachment history I prefer to make it uh, in the session in the individual session that they can see the emotional reactions and so on not just that they write some answers to some questions so they can see each other respond to those questions so the attachment history questions you don't send that home as a questionnaire that's something you're going to do as an assessment in person Yes, but yeah, I think so. standardly the back or not the back, I'm sorry, the DAS, the dyadic adjustment and the um, ARE questionnaire. And um, then you have a depression questionnaire available. And I guess depending on the couple, you may also uh, a couple of other questionnaires that I have and I could make available, which I do will do some of these the screening in person, but um, I may also go into more depth questionnaires um, with a sexual history, with um, an interpersonal violence scale, depending on the distress level of the couple and how they have responded to kind of those initial screening questions um, when I saw them the first, when I've seen them too. So those may be some additional questionnaires on specific kind of topics that I wouldn't necessarily um, give to everyone. How about you? Do you do you other additional um, questionnaires that you like to use, Simona? Uh, no, this is what I use. I mean, and especially what they are good for is not that like I scale them and I have uh, how many points each of them they got, but it's very interesting how the areas where they function and the areas where they don't function, they are very easily uh seen and i don't need to ask and ask where are the areas where you are good and you are not good and i kind of they give me an idea for the second session already i know where to go you know where to hit let's say where which is the target because for some it's the sexual relationship for the others is just the communication right Yes, yeah, so I'm going to put a link here. There is some um, <clears throat> forms that, um, <clears throat> sorry, that, of course, they're in English, but that you can look over. And as a viewer, you can go to that link as well and click, see any of those forms that you think might be helpful to you in, ass in assessment or beginning work, work with your couples. Sometimes, depending on the first session, the couple may want homework or they may want something to do. Sometimes I'll send them with um, assessment instruments like, do you know your cycle? And it's kind of a fill in the blank of how they get caught, um, where they get stuck with each other, what the negative, helping them to kind of figure out what the negative pattern is between them. So those, you'll, you can kind of find forms that you like to use when it comes to some particular issues or particular couples who are like, give me, give us more, you know, give us something to do. Then sometimes those additional assessments really help them to start to think about things from the relational frame, which is one of the things I love about these assessment forms is to help them, especially the attachment questions and the the accessibility, responsiveness, and engagement forms, because that helps them start to think about their internal world, their feelings, and the interaction between them in a different way. Anything else about those initial assessment forms um, or kind of procedures, Simona, that, that you want to 
talk about? No, just that the dyadic adjustment scale, the attachment history, the um, attachment questionnaire, I have them in Romanian translated. Actually, I did it for my PhD, the attachment uh, questionnaire. And so I can uh, give as well a link uh, and I can uh, give the forms with translated in Romanian, I guess it's not that Fantastic. they work with the same questionnaires, you know. And as well from the um, Hold Me Tight training, I have some forms where they can see their cycles, they can, they are um, helped to see their cycles, they are helped to, to just to fill in some words and the others they you know, they just put sentence and words in the sentence and in the end they can track a bit their cycle. Yeah. So as well, they have, I have this in Romanian, so I can, That's I can... helpful that, that really yes. people can just use and give to their couples because you've already gone to the effort to translate it. So fantastic. That's really very helpful. So let's shift for a moment because the other big thing that we didn't talk about in part one, um, we were talking about how to, how to, to do it, to video, how to, how to introduce it to the couple, how to get the form signed for it, but actually how to do it. Like what camera, what kind of setup, how do you actually video sessions, um, which is, can also be the other kind of stumbling block for people um, if you're trying to learn EFT and you're not, you know, highly technical, then that can be a really big kind of difficult place is how do I start to videotape? What do I need a camera? What kind of camera? What do I do? What do I do with the film? How do I use it? How do I get rid of it? Those are kind of some things that we can maybe touch on just a minute, Simona. So for a minute. So what have you found helpful to you in your office? Yes, yeah, so this was scary for me as well because I'm not so technical and I didn't know. So even I started, if you remember, with a video camera which was very old and we had such like small tapes which nobody could actually download them anymore. So yes, so this yes, I, started I started for... Too, with the camera that I just had at home, the, the video cam that I had and when, of course when I started, it's been a number of years ago, but we were still using those really great, great big VHS tapes. And then I went to a mini VA, um, VHSC, you know, which I think is what you started with, this, these little kind of VHS tapes that are compact, that are kind of small. And of course everything now is digital and digitized and it's a much different a way to do it but you can start with what you have as long as you have a way to share it with someone who you want to get some consultation with yeah so then i just bought look i have here the camera a small camera yep. not so complicated and i just started to record and it's so easy then i downloaded in my uh, computer and I see the file it's so easy and just now after years I said okay I will buy me a tripod this can be useful as well that the camera stays wherever you want and um, records from the angle that you think they are the best because this is as well important to see the couple but to see yourself your non-verbal language sometimes is very important yes. um, yeah but i guess in the beginning beginning if we cannot afford the camera i guess now the phones are so i don't know good that they can record and then we can from the phone we we download in the in the computer i guess this is one way to start when we cannot yet afford the a camera yep that's one way to start and a lot of uh, therapists are using their phones or their ipads perhaps or their original 
webcam or camera that they have some cup some therapists are using their computer and the webcam on their computer so it records directly to their computer and you can often buy web cameras um, for less you know a, a, as a less expensive option too the tricky part about using your phone or your ipad is those are very mobile devices and this is confidential material so safeguarding that making sure that you are transferring it not walking around with a phone that if you lost that that material would be very available for other people to see or upload or um you know do something with so you want to make sure that you're using security measures if you're doing it on a mobile device that you're walking around with and it's in your pocket for your everyday use, not just for your clinical use. Yeah. So I want to put those security measures in place, but certainly a lot of therapists are using phones, iPads, um, or their laptops, or their, if they have a computer in their office using those webcams. And so, so those are great options to get started and then just being mindful of the security around that. And typically you wanna be able to have it locked and password protected so that it's kind of has a, in the old days in America, when we talked about confidentiality, it was that the paperwork, it actually, it's not the old days, it's still that way, um, but it's it had to transform a little bit as it'll record keeping as well as videos. It would be in behind two locks. So you would have the file cabinet, have the files in the file cabinet. And then that file cabinet needed to be in a room within the building that was locked. So that, that there's like that double security. And you want to think about that in relation to, to how you keep and store your video, no matter what kind of device that you have it on that, um, you're transporting it, you're going from your office to your house, you're gonna watch it at home some night, you're not watching it um, you know, at your office, that when it's, when, you're, when it's in transit, that it, you've kept it secure in some way, you know, that it's um, locked and that those files, can, though you can lock those files on those devices. So we, even when you unlock your device, those particular files are still secure. And that's a, an important part if you're using something mobile like that. Or you have, if you're using a camera that when you're transporting it, it has video on it, that perhaps you have a little, um, a little file move, a little locked container that you can carry it around as well. So it's, it's sensitive material. Um, Although I think watching therapy tape, if you're not a therapist, is probably probably some of the boringest, boringest video that people could come across. But we really want to respect that confidentiality and people's right to privacy and, pr and protect it. Your thoughts, Simona? No, this is a good thought about security. I didn't think because I never recorded it on phone. But phone and iPad, yes, we should be more aware that they um, they can be lost or stolen, and then the material to go in yeah. in wrong hands. And there's ways to do that. So if you're not really highly technical, there's kind of some simple applications that you can find and use for those kind of security purposes. Okay, so I don't know if there's, do you have other things that you wanted to bring up? I think we went through the list of questions pretty well, but there may be a couple others that are kind of hanging out there that you have on your mind. No, I'm, I guess we, these were my main points on this topic. Uh, how do we attract, convince the most, how do we attract couple in therapy? How do we convince the most reluctant partner to join the, the other partners that want therapy? How do we, and I think this for me was an important mm -hmm. step or move. How do we 
uh, tell them that individual therapy is working and is helpful, but sometimes even for individual problems, couple therapy can be more helpful. It's so great and... that we have that research. I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. It's so great we have that research that couple therapy actually helps depression. You know, so if someone who comes in for depression, you couple therapies going to treat them as well or better than individual therapy and prevent more relapse. Um, and we're finding that for more and more specific kinds of problems that the individual has that the couple treatment is a, a better choice of treatment. So it's very exciting for as a couple therapist. And then uh, we we passed to these subjects that we have them there. What do we do in the first session? How do we make um, a, a good atmosphere? I mean, a secure and safe environment that they are sure that we will take care of their confidentiality, which is a very sensitive uh, sensitive point. So I guess your consent that you send and what I have as well can be useful for for our colleagues and the the questioners to that, um, to that eft romania i guess that's what we just want them to go back to that facebook page we do you have uh, we have you can put links there for uh, some of these forms that we've talked about that you've translated and um, also that was recently translated for the video consent. So those initial forms are available. And you want to just uh, tell where, is there a file within a Facebook group or a page, Simona, where those files are kept? Or can we, how would we make those uh, links available? So uh, on EFT Romania, .ro, yet they are not posted links because this is a public yeah. website I mean I wouldn't feel very good to put there but I guess on the EFT group yes would be Facebook. a good idea mm -hmm. yeah. yeah on the Facebook group where we have we don't have it yet uh, we have just what uh, Florentina translated your consent uh, for videotape uh, form but there I will add up in the group um, what I have translated and yeah. if others they have other questionnaires translated which can be helpful and for sure will be helpful they can put it there because there it's a locked group it's a uh, it's just it's us a and so it's a private uh, Facebook group private group on Facebook for emotionally focused therapy Romania and there is a place to upload files that you will upload these files. There's like a file area within that group. So look within that group. If you're not a member, request to be a member of it. Look, uh, look under the file and you will find some of these forms. And if you have a form, share it. We'd love to uh, increase those options for other couple therapists. Yes, of course. Just we this is very good that it's on a private group that we know that goes to the specialist all these forms and they are used they are in the good hands yeah they're with people who know how to use the forms right who've received the basic training in emotionally focused therapy you've taken the externship and really have that attachment perspective and know how to utilize these these sorts of forms and these sorts of questionnaires fantastic Okay, so we've done it again. Here we go. Thank you so much for joining. You know, it's been great to have a conversation with you about this and hopefully this is helpful to anyone who views it. We hope uh, you as a viewer have also learned from it and uh, be in contact with us if you have other questions and we look forward to seeing you in one of the trainings or consultation groups um, online and in person when it comes to being learning how to do excellent couple therapy. So thank you, Simona. Uh, thank you. And I really hope that this encourages everybody uh, to have real couples. And I really hope to hear 
back from them how did it work what and what if they took any anything from what we said here and it was helpful because this will be encouraging for the others and the others and the others and we will have a lot of happy couples <laughs> yes i love that that's a great idea if you heard anything that's helpful to you and you tried it and used it come back to the facebook uh, eft romania group and share what you're doing that's working anything you've tried that's working with bringing couples in with advertising yourself as a couple therapist with any forms or agreements or any, even anything within the therapy itself that you're finding useful and helpful we want to hear about it as well as answer your questions we want to keep this circle growing and uh, feeling secure and feeling more and more confident going along. Okay, so thank you, Simona, and thank to each of you for listening and being here and being part of this revolution, bringing emotionally focused therapy to Romania. Bye now. Okay, okay. bye. Bye.